we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Ready to vote? <coughs> Next on the agenda is uh, school highlights. The Public School Foundation Investment Committee update. And board members and Dr. Anderson and staff, it's not only our obligation, but our pleasure to come and give the annual update about the funds that you've entrusted us to investigate. Investigate, we do that too. <laughs> Invest, excuse me. Um, to do that is our investment chairperson, who is a long time Topeka banker. I'd ask him to step forward, Mr. Steve Page. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Members of the board, Dr. Anderson, it is a pleasure to be here so long as we have good news. And today we do have good news, I think. Can you all hear me okay? Uh, I think in your packets, uh, there should be three slides relating to the, uh, the three portfolios that the investment committee is responsible for. And just uh, as a reminder, uh, we work with uh, Clayton Financial, who are the, the actual managers, and uh, our committee. I'd like to, uh, to, to, to thank uh, Scott uh, Mickelson, Janice Ellie, uh, Steve Heron, and Kirk Johnson members of our committee for their work uh, as, as well. Um, I think the first uh, portfolio overview that's in your packet should be for the sports park. Um, and I would, uh, I would just go point out a couple of things. So first of all, under the asset allocation, you'll see what, uh, that the investments are, are split uh, between equities and fixed income. And at this point, we're near the top of the equity allocation according to the, to, the, uh, to the guidelines. We're almost at 80%. And that's divided between domestic equity and international equity. Uh, incidentally, all the investments in all of these portfolios are in either mutual funds or exchange-traded funds. There are no individual securities in, in, in those kinds of funds. Um, as of the end of September, which is the most recent data that we have, uh, if you look under the components of change, you'll see that the ending value was just under $2 million for the sports park. Um, I would say as of today, although I don't have the number, it is well over $2 million as the stock market has continued to rise since the end of the quarter. Um, I'd also mention that at the end of 2012, uh, the fund was about $640,000. So we've had some significant growth, uh, some significant contributions that, that pushed this fund over the $2 million mark at this point. Uh, in terms of, uh, if you're interested in performance numbers, uh, the portfolio for the uh, year ending September 30th earned over 14% uh, for that year. In the last three years, it's well over 7%. And, those numbers are right in line with the benchmarks that we use to measure the performance of our managers. So that's where we are in the sports park. Uh, any questions in regard to that? Yes. Have there been any uh, withdrawals made from the, the Not during the last year. Now, there were, there were significant withdrawals made in 2015 for the turf on the, mm -hmm. on the football field. Mm -hmm. And so uh, returns are continually reinvested. Yes, everything else has been reinvested since then. Any other questions? We'll move on to the next slide, which is for the education fund. Uh, this fund is managed more conservatively because, it, for one thing, it's smaller. Uh, you'll note under the components of change that at the end of the quarter, the ending value was just over 237000 for the last uh, th uh, three years, it's, it's grown by about $37,000, and so we're at just over two thirty-seven. If you look at the asset allocation, uh, 
There is, again, a significant portion allocated to equities, but it's closer to 60%, which is near the top of the, uh, of the range that we use under the investment guidelines for this fund. Uh, since this fund is more conservatively invested, uh, the returns haven't been quite as glossy as they were for the sports park over the last uh, year. Portfolio earned over 11%. Over the last three years, just under 6% per year. Uh, that is the, uh, the education fund. And I don't think we've had any withdrawals from that fund, have we, Pam? Any questions on the education fund? The final slide is for the, the newest fund, which we call the Highlander Fund. And uh, we, had, uh, we received an inception $478,039 in this fund. At the end of September, uh, we were at $496,256. And this fund is managed uh, in almost the identical way that the education fund is. In other words, uh, we're up to around 60% in equities and 40% in uh, fixed income. Uh, since inception, which is uh, May, since May 31, so you only got a four-year, four-month uh, <coughs> history here, uh, the, the portfolios earned 4% uh, over that uh, four-month period. Any questions on the Highlander Fund? In the interest of time, that's all I have to present, but I would be glad to answer any other questions or, that you might have. Any questions? Uh, Dr. Mickelson. Just one comment. I serve on this committee and, and just want to reassure my colleagues that um, the Clayton Group is well represented. Um, the committee is very active and, and listens. We meet quarterly the first, the third Tuesday after the quarter ends, I think is our, our date. Um, there's two members in the Clayton group that come and, and provide this report. Mr. Page uh, very capably leads this committee, and so uh, is in good hands. So. Okay. Thanks for your um, uh, being on the committee as well. Thanks for your report. Very Thank good you report. very much. We're now ready for public communications, and I see one. Ms. Stephanie Harson. So, Stephanie, I don't have the thing, but we've, we've, yeah, just tell us your name and address. And I'm Stephanie Harson. I live at 1033 Southwest Billard, Topeka, Kansas, 6604, and I am a uh, teacher in Topeka Public Schools in special education, and I am also the president of NEA Topeka, our local education association. Tonight, I wanted to share with all of you some exciting news. Last year, about this time, I had submitted a nomination for one of my former teachers, Ms. Julie Friedstrom, who is currently working as a paraeducator in Randolph Elementary with special education students for an NEA, a statewide uh, classified staff award called the Education Support Professional of the Year. Uh, part of why I did that, just so you know quickly, is that Julie has been one of those people that I have been lucky to have kind of um, come in and out of my life. And every single memory and interaction is always beautiful and wonderful and memorable. She is one of the warmest, kindest, most encouraging, supporting people I know. And uh, the warmth that I remember as a kindergartner in her PE classroom, um, you know, has just increased over the years. Uh, at the time, you know, my brother remembers that he was older than I was and that uh, it was the 70s and one of the things that she did in gym class was teach them the hustle. So uh, she was also cutting edge, and she still is. Um, but, uh, you know, no one really, I mean, it, it was competitive sports at that time. That was how you, you know, became physically fit. But Ju Julie thought that there was value in, you know, lifelong activities such as dancing. And um, that was one of the things that he remembered. 
So anyway, um, as we fast forward, uh, the first summer that I was teaching special education summer school, Julie was one of the paras assigned to my classroom, and so we reconnected that summer and had a really great experience working with students and encouraging um, them to uh, kind of calm themselves down as the day started and get excited about being there and also improve uh, mobility and flexibility and fine motor skills uh, with some activities and some exercises. She also has spent a lot of time working with me in support of education-friendly candidates. And that is another reason that she has been nominated for this award. She goes above and beyond for students, but really the thing that stands out is just how warmly she welcomes anyone into a building. A parent, a student, a new teacher, um, a veteran teacher, an administrator. She is there to greet people and welcome them to the profession. And she does the same thing with the association. We just found out a couple of days ago that our nomination and um, the packet that we worked on over Thanksgiving break to um, have Julie move forward to the na nationwide NEA ESP of the Year Award has been accepted. She is one of a um, small number of applicants who will be competing for a nationwide award and will be representing not only us, but the whole state of Kansas in March. So we just wanted to announce that and, you know, keep you all posted on this. We're incredibly proud of Julie, incredibly proud of her accomplishment. Dr. Anderson and board members, I am beyond humbled and honored to be receiving the earlier award that I did in April and I look forward to going to the National Convention over spring break. And win or lose, it doesn't really matter. I feel like a winner because I'm representing you all in Kansas and NEA, and I'm beyond thrilled. And I love the profession I've worked in for 40 years here at 501. And so I say thank you very much. say that? Ms. Harson, isn't this the first time someone from Kansas is going on to the ESP uh, National Award? Is that what you shared earlier? We have never had a person from Kansas move ahead in the classified field. We are going back and trying to research because Kansas was one of, you know, in the 1860s or something that became part of this organization. So we don't know if there are any administrators or teachers that have ever moved forward, but to our knowledge, she is the first classified staff member to move forward from Kansas. Ms. Preacher, don't you have a grandson that's at McCarter? Is that right? Yes, that is correct. Just, just one, and you got another one on, on the way? Is that Yes, okay. I have a That's three year old grandson right. moving up hopefully to do the uh, 501 Academy next year. I might add that uh, we are honored that you're representing us. Thank you very much, Dr. Larson. We are now ready for uh, disposition of business by consent. Mr. President, I move the board approve the items of business by consent as presented and authorize the board president or superintendent to sign the special project and purchasing contracts for and on behalf of the board. Is there discussion? Dr. Mickelson. Just briefly, you'll notice that the academic calendar for 2018-2019 is on the uh, business by consent agenda. Um, just commend uh, Ms. Harson and Ms. Wallace for their work to coordinate and collaborate and gain input from all interested parties to, uh, to come up with the schedule that I think will work for everybody. So thank you for your work. We're ready for both.
So we're ready for your superintendent's report. Thank you. At this time, uh, Mr. Dick will be coming to the podium and Mrs. Wallace will begin sharing information about course proposals. As you have questions, uh, at this time we're just presenting it as a discussion item because we really wanted you to have time to review it, uh, listen a little bit uh, to the direction that we're going and some of the rationale behind some of the courses. And then the next meeting we'll be asking for you to vote on course proposals rather than having it all done at one meeting. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Wallace, and on the screen is the same uh, form that you have at your desk or at your table. Uh, so I'll turn it over to Ms. Wallace to start, and Mr. Uh, Dick is available to answer questions and to add to her comments. Okay. Um, as you look at it, there are several that are um, some cleanup items, changes of titles to make things more succinct um, in the program of studies, and then there are some removals of courses that are being replaced by other courses. Um, one example is in forensics. Um, we are removing forensics and just adding forensics one, two, three, four as a cleanup. Um, we've had advanced and different titles in different schools. So this um, is a nice cleanup for that. And then um, there are several courses we are adding for uh, our career pathways. And I'll let Mr. Dick share those. There are several courses on there uh, to go to TCALC as we open that uh, building in the next year, we hope. And so these are all new programs that uh, we would need to find instructors for and hope to have as we open that facility uh, around computer programming and coding, some things there, uh, physical therapy, sports medicine, the wind energy things. One correction that we noticed on the sheet there just a minute ago is that the wind energy, the concurrent credit is actually with Clint Hills Technical School, not with Marshall Tech. Uh, EM2, EMT2, uh, and then some uh, public safety education. So uh, those are the new <coughs> courses to be added to the TCAL program. Uh, is there any EMT1? Is there an EMT1 already? There yes. is. Yes, there is. So. I'm sorry. Would the would these uh, programs come with any uh, associate degrees above um, any degrees above high school? No degree certificates uh, in place for that. So one that we're pretty excited about is actually the first one on the list: the pharmacy. Uh, we are have the ability now this next semester with this approval to do a pharmacy tech certificate for students uh, through TCAL this next semester. So we're pretty excited about that. Most of these carry uh, work certificates with them that kids are able to get as they move on out there. There are a couple uh, that we've added for concurrent credit that is new. So down towards the bottom, the robotics and advanced automation robotics, uh, that's engineering uh, one, design one class at Washburn. They'll allow concurrent credit for that course uh, as part of that. So we're pretty excited about getting that another course that we can do concurrent credit for with Washburn University. Uh, we also added a couple things to the middle school level uh, just to talk about it in the future is expanding on high school courses available for high school credit to middle school students and so uh, in the area of science we added earth science and space science uh, to that list. Ms. Kirk? Um, I'm, I'm just looking at the fact that you have introduction to computer coding and you have that at TCALC. Is that isn't that some, I guess my thought was that that would be at the much, a much lower level than that we'd be looking at, at some, we do, kids can do coding in, in middle school. Um, so I'm looking at, wouldn't we be doing that in high school rather than on TCAL? <coughs> I'm just, I'm just, I mean, try, it, it struck me, but it's strange. So I, I just didn't know whether we have, as we have other classes or? Right, as we presented this, um, for action next time. The location where it's offered was not necessarily going to be part of the approval because we want the flexibility to be able to, sh to offer courses at every school across the board. We may not always offer them, but that gives us the flexibility. So we could do uh, introduction to computer coding in, as a freshman class or as a, I mean, I, that seems to me that's where that stuff ought to be. Um, so, because it's really, huh? Nine to ten. Okay, it's not take out. Okay, so that doesn't mean anything. The location is um, 
it really anywhere for action <laughs> item we'll switch it to all okay. including t calc and okay the comprehensive high schools thank you I, it just seems strange for me that i see that as an upper level process and thank you dr mccarthy um so i am extremely excited about this and uh Pharmacy tech, for example, that's just money in the bank. It sure is. is. I've had clients who um, had to, in order to get this certification, had to go to for-profit places like Rasmussen and got terribly in debt. So that is an incredible opportunity to be offering our kids. Uh, the second one, obviously, I'm really excited about adding those AP classes and computer science. That is. I, I don't even know if many other high schools in the county offer that. Or do, you, do you know the answer to that? We, we may be the first, there may be one other, but I, I don't think so. So this is really forward thinking. And um, I think the other thing I love about that is I think it's gonna draw in um, another group of students into AP classes. So good job, thanks. I have um, just one question. Previously, when we had a student go to one of the technical colleges, they would have to um, buy things um, that, um, like tools for um, welding or something like that. Or, uh, so, are any of these cl uh, classes with Flint Hills or WIT? Uh, I mean, do we are do we need to furnish money for them, or? The ones it? that we offer here, and as part of TCOP, we take care of all of those materials for students. And we've tried to get more in the habit of even those that go to Washburn Tech. When we, when we can and where we're able to, we've, we've been working towards providing all of that equipment, books, tools, fees, anything they need to try to limit barriers to students to be able to go and get those credentials that they want through those programs. I, I am aware that what, with the pharmacy tech certificate, though, I think, if I understand this correctly, the students that attend Highland Park Advisors Excel will cover, there is a fee to take the exam, like a $110 fee or something. $115. $115. Yeah, and we're, we will find ways to pay for that. Yeah, so the like Highland Park Advisors Excel is, is generously donating that fee to the Highland Park students, and then we'll just have to figure out those students that aren't from Highland Park, how they can yeah. take we'll that exam. That out. But yeah, we, we intend to pay for that for students. The other piece is um, with new legislation around ESSA and Title, Title IV can now help fund these assessments for students. There are no other questions. Um, as you can see, this particular set of course proposals really is aligned to our strategic plan and it's focused on college and career readiness, which may be a little different than proposals you've seen in the past. And really the goal is ultimately 30 to 60 college hours is what we are aiming for every student to be able to get really on the end of 60 college hours at the end of their high school college or career credential related hours at the end of their high school experience and that's really so you know that's really what this is pushed towards so thank you both mr. Dick and mrs. Wallace and all else who have been involved with creating a expanded pathways and new opportunities for our young people. So next uh, board meeting, we'll be bringing this back. If there are any other questions or items you'd like to suggest or ask about, please do let us know. The other superintendent's report item, we'd like to, we have two small things. One, uh, the strategic plan update. This was part of that update in regards to course proposals. Each time we have the board meeting, we really want to talk about a strategic plan goal. The January 1 will be dual language, and Dr. Gomez will fly in for that meeting, and he'll be giving an update on the dual language equity end of that piece. Um, but every meeting, we kind of want to give you a small update in that regard. We did just have our, uh, as they bring up the video, our mentor meeting under college and career readiness. We have mentors throughout central office um, who are now assigned to seniors. Last year, 75% of those students did graduate and or go directly into a career out of who participated. So we are doing this again this year and the first session was Wednesday. Is that just yesterday? 
Oh, wow. Okay. So that was yesterday. <laughs> so that was just yesterday. And so uh, please join me in watching the two-minute clip. And then Ms. Kruger is invited to share any comments she'd like to share as her staff members are also mentoring young people. Is that there's somebody, like, out there that's willing to help me that I didn't, like, really talk to before. Like, I never knew that I would be connected and have so much in common with somebody. Is, that's Mr. Hanson, is that the beginning so of it? The benefit I have from the mental. Is that there's somebody like out there that's okay. willing to help me that I didn't like really talk to before. Like I never knew that I would be connected and have so much in common. Is that there's somebody like out there that's willing to help me that I didn't like really talk to before. Like I never knew that I would be connected and have so much in common with somebody. And it, that's helped me. Uh, one benefit I had from the mentorship program is that uh, my mentor, uh, McDonald, he uh, just made made sure that I was on top of my grades and uh, stayed on me about my fifth grade because it was my lowest grade and made sure I kept it up and kept getting it up. Well, my first experience with Rob Sykes was pretty cool. He just kind of talked about himself and what he went through and how he got to where he was at today, how he felt that that could contribute to what I'm trying to attain. We actually have each other's phone numbers, and so once in a while we would text each other and see how we're doing. With the kickoff being very um, close to the Apply Kansas Day, um, they were able to stay and assist in making sure that students were you know, filling out college applications. And although many of our students really know how to do that, having someone right behind them as accountability and support and encouragement um, is, is really huge. I've never had a mentor, and I'd like to have one throughout college because it helped me with getting through it and keeping on track and some of that. So after school, I would like to be somewhere in the accounting field, CPA, cost accounting, or forensic accounting. After high school, I want to go to K-State to do the business program and become an accountant. We are excited about just creative ways of connecting people with people. You know, uh, from all walks of our school district. So, finance office, rap sites, mentor, mentee was there. Um, and we're also excited about seeing 100% of those kids this year uh, graduate and move straight to a career. So, last year was 75%. We're successful in doing that and we'll continue to push on. So, for those in the audience, including Mrs. Harson, who's one of the mentors, and her mentee wants to be a teacher, one of her two mentees, her other mentee is her former student who she's still trying to make come to the mentee sessions. <laughs> um, we thank you. We thank all of you for contributing uh, to making sure they, they are successful. That concludes the superintendent's update. I see nothing else on the agenda, but uh, I'll take a motion to recess to executive session for a small amount of time. Mr. President, I move the board recess to executive session to discuss individual employee contracts pursuant to the non-elected personnel exception under COMA, and the open meeting will resume at recommendations here, 8 o'clock, I think it's an hour. 7.30. Five minutes. Okay, 7.30. I hope you're right. So before we do that. No action on an adjournment. That's all we will do. I skipped board comments. I cut you guys out. <laughs> So, okay. well, I, I just have one. Seven thirty-five to say that. I gave you uh, a copy of this abstract from the top program at uh, in Wichita um, on early childhood education. It studies the kids for four years and has some very significant findings uh, uh, for their early childhood education and. Uh, and it, it, it just made me feel like ever since I've been on the board and you longer term board members, you, you've had the right ideas that early childhood education is very, very important. So that was my, my comment. So. Okay. Okay. So, 
we're, we're going to resume at 7.35. And um, that's my motion. Any discussion? Ready to vote?